Yo, 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 what's up all you burner stoners and potheads? This is Weedman420 with the Weedman420 Chronicles. How are all you vipers doing out there, Mrs. Weedman? Mr. Weedman? How the hell are you? Moving. I'm moving. <laughs> moving and shaking? Moving. Or moving and grooving? Moving. <laughs> <laughs> moving on I'm doing up right. <laughs> to the east side. <laughs> Mrs. Weedman's finally got a piece of the pie. Hey, all you burner stoners and potters out there. Hopefully you're smoking some big fat doinks while you're listening to the show. And Mrs. Weedman and I are about to get normal. Mrs. Weedman, light that joint up. And I was doing an event on Friday. And I met these uh, growers. Their name uh, are Lady Buds, B U D Z, uh, and they gave me a, a, a pre roll, and I said I'd love to smoke it because I gave them one of my home grow pre rolls, and they gave me one of theirs, and they're professional growers, and they said I'd really like it. But the only thing bad about this is I have no information. I don't even know what the name of the strain is. It smells good. It smells great, and I saved it for the show. I couldn't wait to smoke it on the show. So Lady Buds. I'm going to show you a card. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the strain. We'll give you a tag and let people know where to find you at. But we appreciate the 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 joint, and oh. we're looking forward to smoking it. I wish everybody could see us. Maybe it's sending me a message to smile. You see the little smiley face? <laughs> <laughs> I wish everyone could see it. It lit like a little smiley face. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So I have no idea what this is, So, but I'll, I'll talk about where we met him, where I met him. So uh, last Friday... I did an event, uh, actually by myself. That was quite lonely. I didn't well, you have had, you had company. I did have company, but Mrs. Weedman was on uh, doing another event, uh, a meet and greet kind of event. <laughs> wow, that does smell really good. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, it was uh, what was the name of the event? I did Bizarre and Bangers, <laughs> and it was run by Zochi, <laughs> right? And it was a really, really cool yes. event. Yes, yes. Uh, it was a bunch <laughs> of vendors. It started at like. 6 30 and it went till 2 a.m uh i left about one <laughs> mr <laughs> Weedman man was high and needed to get home and uh but phenomenal venue it was a cool building inside it was probably about 15 vendors there uh, three awesome djs that were just banging old school chicago house hip-hop some music i'd never heard of it was just cool event i probably stuffed about 50, 60 joints. And I had a friend with me, too, that came and hung out. Javi. Thanks, Javi. Yes. I appreciate you for coming and hanging out with me and uh, keep me company the whole time and uh, help me run the table and stuff. I didn't have my, my, my partner in crime, Mrs. Weedman, to talk about eight decades while I would stuff joints and talk about the strains I was stuffing. But Javi did a great job. Yeah. He was a great... Javi's in the business. Yes. So Javi understands yeah. the, everything about weed. Yeah. So just like a, a good person to connect with super he super nice guy knows everybody yeah yeah he's been around in the industry a long time Ooh. <laughs> oh that's tasty very tasty it's tasty they did say i'd like it mm -hmm. so very nice thank you lady buds um but it was a fun event supporting these these events in the chicago cannabis scene and the, and the illinois cannabis scene with all these cool events that uh that have been popping up everywhere you said it i don't know not too long ago this is going to be the year of cool events and with this event I hope it succeeds, and I, I hope they keep on using the same venue because it was so cool. Um, met a phenomenal hash maker there. Uh, I can't remember their names, unfortunately, but their hash was, oh, my gosh, so good. Um, MMJ Regulators was there. We see him at all the events. He's such a cool dude. And uh, he, had his, uh, he had his little hash smoke area sessions, which was cool. And it was a bunch of all awesome vendors there. Just got to meet some people. Everybody walked by our table. I was given little mini doinks too, and it was just an awesome scene to see people just smoking and having a good time. I loved it. So, and then we have something coming up this Saturday, don't we? Yeah. Should I share where I was at on Saturday sure. night? Share where you were. At. You want to tell the story? This is a good one. <laughs> this is pretty funny. I, <laughs> I think it needs to be shared. So, I had uh, planned a ladies night with a couple other women that are in the business. And um, so we were going to a soft launch for a new uh, brand, a, a, a female Latino owned brand that was starting up in Chicago um, or is starting up in Chicago. So she was having this soft launch party, but some things got misconstrued with instructions at the party. Anyway, we never connected with the party. 
Um, so the three of us, me and the other two girls that I were, was out with, we just hung out and talked shop and had a couple of cocktails, went outside and smoked a joint on our way to the car. Ooh. We were parked in separate parking garages. And we stopped because there was a, I don't know what type of sports car it was. I think maybe it was a new Corvette and it was in a wrap. It was wrapped in this powder blue background uh graphic design with kind of like these little emoji characters all over it like they're floating through the air <laughs> and then there was like bold yellow at the bottom the hood of the car was like carbon uh you know like that silver carbon textured finish and um it was an interesting car vanity plates were like i wonder who this is and i had seen the guy get out of the car when i was going to the party now we're standing by the car and i turn and look now we are in like river north which is a very young very busy section of like kind of downtown downtown not like the offshoot kind of neighborhoods and so this area has you're still kind of like on the cusp of the office district kind of area if there is that per se right like kind of anyway it's a lot of businesses it's a lot of bars it's a lot of restaurants, restaurants there's yeah. hotels and there's businesses yeah. like there's a high-rise uh, offices and then lots of con like lots of just it's a very dense area and the whole street is covered with people it's like you know 20s and 30 year olds all over the place and we're standing by this car in front of a very nice restaurant and we're smoking a joint on the street and we're watching people drive by and everyone who drives by has to stop and look at this car because it's so eye-catching and we're pretending like it's ours i'm like it's my car you like it you like it <laughs> <laughs> we're just goofing around and then i look because i'm now facing like the buildings and i'm like wait a minute what am i looking at right now so you know you're in the city there you've got high rises you might have a you know a 50 story building and then a 10 story building and then you might have another 50 and then you might have a one story building this was a one story building sandwiched in behind between all of these big businesses and it was just kind of obscure it was just like a stucco front building with one little window that was maybe like three foot by two foot and a door both of which said you know, you must be 21 to enter, like uh, X-rated uh, videos and things of that nature, right? So I was like, come on, you've got to be kidding me. Like a place like this still exists in this part of the city? I don't believe it. Like this is like prime real estate and it's only one story. How did someone not buy this this building, you know, like buy this business out, have them move kind of thing? So I, I don't believe it. I'm like, I don't even, I, I don't believe it. What if that is the best speakeasy inside and we go home tonight and we missed it. I'm like, I think we need to go in there and make sure that we're not missing the fun. <laughs> so we open the door and I'm expecting it to be like dark and like mysterious inside. Oh, no. It was like shiny, bright. Hi, <laughs> oh. you're in a sex shop. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> it really was a sex shop. So we go in and there's like kind of a center aisle. The cashier is up front, kind of on an elevated platform behind like a big desk and lots of papers and things and then one side of the store is just stacked to the ceiling with videos 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 the other side of the store is stacked every hook is shiny and clean and organized like nobody's buying anything because they're going straight to the back to the store but the right side was all sex toys and then at the back of the store there were lights above the doorway and it said vacant or not vacant right lit up or not lit up and there's a sign that says women are not allowed do not enter and then there's a series of like uh, Sharpie on kind of a, a spreadsheet of the movies that are available back in these previewing rooms. <laughs> so we're like, so we're like, where are we? So that's where you what went the on heck Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we start engaging in conversation with the guy who's working there. And that was a whole you ball of that. interestingness. <laughs> I won't even go there. And so then. What was that person's name though? Uh, he, he didn't say his name. No, no. You gotta describe what he looked like, though. You told me what he looked like, and I was when I was driving home. You kept me. Uh... Well, we couldn't believe that he was sixty. He he said that he was sixty, and we're like, no way. We're all fifty. Like we're just on the cusp of fifty, or uh, I'm over fifty, whatever. We we're like right around the same age. We're looking at. It, we're like, you're not. You're not sixty. So I was like, what kind of work have you done? And he was just so offended, like. I don't have any work done. And so we just started this like very lighthearted, fun conversation, but found out or learned a lot about him. He he talked with us quite a bit, but he had white hair, like white long hair that was in a ponytail. One of the girls I was with had a pink hat on. He's like, my hair is usually pink like that. I was like, well, 
what are you waiting for? Like, why is it white right now? Go color it. He's like, uh, it takes too long. Da, 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 da. But it was just fun. It was fun conversation. It was nice to meet somebody new. But it was at the same time, I'm like, are we going to get like kidnapped? Are we ever going to come out of this place? Where are we? It was like, well, we had just smoked yeah, this big ass joint out in the front. Yeah. So like it was starting to get kind of weird feeling. Mm -hmm. Like, I think someone's going to come out of that back and get us. <laughs> I think we need to do. So we're done having conversation and we scoot out the door and we spill back out on the street. Now we're like in the mix of these 20 and 30 year olds that are all partying on Friday night. And here are these three, you know, moms <laughs> pouring out of the porn, the porn shop. I was like, hey, it really is a porn shop in there. <laughs> It was just the funniest experience. And then we were like, okay, bye. And we all went to our cars and That's had funny. a good laugh about it. That's a good one. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was so funny. We were so high. <laughs> yeah, you told me you had just smoked. And yeah, like we couldn't yeah. actually get in our cars and drive. So, right. I mean, let's kill some time going yeah. and see what's so in there. So you went and watched the peep yeah. show. <laughs> well, we really thought it was going to be a bar, like a club of right. some sort inside there. It was a true. Thought it was just like a front. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Uh, what do so, we got going on this Saturday? This Saturday is the Illinois Rosin Competition. Yep. It is the first unofficial official. I think it's just the first. The first. So we'll call it the official rosin competition in Illinois. What? So there are going to be, I don't know, I think they had close to like 20 entrants, maybe more, give or take, five or ten. Um, and so there's a bunch of... Um, Different people. Uh, I think Made Gallery is a judge. Uh, Shanky, Southside Shanky is mm -hmm. a judge. Uh, Jungle Kai is a judge. No, not Jungle Kai. Uh, anyway, there's a handful of some social media influencers and people in the business, uh, ancillary business or directly in the cannabis business um, that are judging it. And there's going to be vendors and DJs. And it's it. I think it's going to be a Pretty, pretty rocking time. It's going to be at the Blue Island Beer Company. There are still tickets available. I suspect that by Friday they, it will be sold out. Yeah, um, it's going to be fun. It's from 5 to 10 p.m. on, on Saturday. Yeah, big yeah. day. Blue Island. Bring your, uh, bring yeah. your, bring bring your, your uh, rig, bring some whatever. But bring if, you, your long, if you have like a, bring your long game, though. Yeah, bring one. your long game. <laughs> 5 to 10 o'clock. Pace so, yourself. Yeah, yeah. bring your yeah. long game. We'll be there. Come see Mr. Weedman. I'll be rolling joints. Or stuff and, and joints. Mrs. Weedman, Mr. Weedman, I will have the eight decades spread, yeah. and you can buy and fly and try. Go get high. Buy, fly, and try. Buy, get high, try. Yeah. What? Yeah, and something then go like fly. that. I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, fly. <laughs> but you should have so, fun with it. Yeah. So, Lady Buds. Yeah. Good weed. I'm stoned. It's good. I'm pretty I'm high. Like, yeah, I'm like. Uh, Stoned. Yeah, like I can't. I, <laughs> That's all I can struggling. Say. I'm going to say I'm struggling. I'm not struggling. Maybe a little. I'm stoned. Yeah. I, I, it's pretty. Whew. Ladybuds? It's good. Give them a follow. It's cute. Thank you for uh, supplying some weed for the show. Because <laughs> I'm baked and now I got to get the show started. You ready, Mrs. Weed? Uh, I'm going to try. <laughs> Uh, I thought this was a cool article. Cannabis extracts found to slow melanoma cell growth and trigger cell death. A new study has found an extract derived from the cannabis sativa plant can inhibit the growth of melanoma cells and trigger cell death. The next step is to develop a targeted delivery system before moving on to preclinical trials and investigating whether the extract can be used to treat other types of cancers. Melanoma might only account for around 6% of skin cancers, but it's the cause of more than 80% of skin cancer deaths. Did you know that? Hmm. Mel melanoma? Yeah, yes. You know what caused 80% of the deaths, though? From it's skin cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's only 6% of people get it, right. but 80% die from it. Yes. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That was crazy when I read that. And uh, the cancer is prone to mes uh, metastasizing and has been shown to be highly resistant to traditional treatments. And a new study research from Charles Darwin University and RMIT in Australia developed a non-traditional treatment, a, a cannabis extract that stops melanoma cells from dividing and triggers a pr the process of programmed cell death. Yeah. The damage to the melanoma cell prevents it from dividing into new cells and instead begins a programmed cell death, also known as uh, apoptosis, apoptosis, said Nazim Nazir a co-corresponding author of the study. This is a growing area of important uh, research because we need to understand cannabis extracts as much as possible, especially their potential to function as anti-cancer agents. 
if we know how they react to cancer cells, particularly in the cause of cell death, we can refine treatment techniques to be more specific, responsive, and effective. Previous studies have suggested that certain compounds present in cannabis may have anti-tumor effects by affecting on uh, receptors in an in indigenous cannabinoid or endocannabinoid system, the ECS. The cannabinoid receptors CB1, CB2, widely distributed in the central nervous and peripheral immune systems, influence various intercellular sig signaling pathways that regulate different processes, indulging gene transcription, cell Motality and apoptosis. Man, that was kind of those that was words. Kind of technical. I'm really high. The words are hard. <laughs> I didn't really hear much of anything That's you okay. said. Okay. It's okay. I was staring at the wall. At the Pinocchio. <laughs> at the Pinocchio. <laughs> <laughs> In the current study, the research tested the effects of the <laughs> PHEC-66, an extract derived from cannabis sativa on the growth of the primary and secondary uh, human melanoma cells. They found that. Uh, PEC-66 embedded a growth of all melanoma cell lines by interacting with the CB1 and CB2 receptors. They also found that PHEC-66 inhibited the progression of the cell cycle, a series of events that takes place as a cell grows and divides. The sub-G1 and G1 phases were particularly affected. The G1 phase is when the cell prepares to divide by copying all of its DNA. In addition, the research observed by the PEC-66 influenced metabolic pathways by causing an uh, accumulation of reactive oxygen species, ROS, in the melanoma cells, pushing them towards pro-apoptotic signaling pathways while diminishing anti-apoptotic... Man, why do they keep on throwing that word at me? That's like five times <laughs> I've had to say that fucking word. <laughs> Apoptotic <laughs> ones. <laughs> Don't do that to somebody when they're this high. Damn you, lady buds. <laughs> Appreciate it, though. All these actions together start the price process of apoptotosis <laughs> and slows down the growth of melanoma cells, said the researchers. That's good. The next step is to develop targeted delivery systems to deliver the extract to the melanoma cells in the body so the researchers can proceed the preclinical trials to test PEC-66 safety and efficiency. Advanced delivery systems still need to be fully developed, underscoring the importance of the ongoing efforts to ensure the proper and effective use of these agents at target sites, Nazir said. The study findings have the potential to advance treatments not only for melanoma but also for other types of cancer. Clinical uses of cannabis extracts include treatment for anxiety, cancer-related symptoms, epilepsy, chronic pain, said Nazir. Intensive research into the uh, potential for killing melanoma cells is only the start as we investigate how this knowledge can be applied to treating different kinds of cancers. The study was published in the Journal of Cells. Hmm. That's pretty good. Some recognition, finally. Hey, you know what? It's your turn. Mm. <laughs> so, but here, but I can here, do this. Is, wait, wait, wait. I can do this. I'm glad we smoked this strain, and I'm so glad we're this high. Mm -hmm. You want to know why? Because your article is how, how long, long a cannabis high actually lasts. Whoa. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> how ironic. How ironic. Because Lady ironic. Buds, you got us pretty high. Yeah. <laughs> Are you good? So, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm going to stand I'm going to stand point here. If you ask 50 different people how long the effects of cannabis last, you're likely to get 50 different answers. This can be a problem for figuring out how long a patient using the drug for medicinal purposes is going to remain impaired. A meta-analysis of 80 papers published in 2021 narrowed down this time frame. Depending on factors such as how the cannabis is consumed and how strong it is, the user can remain impaired for between 3 and 10 hours, scientists say. This information can help with advisory information given to patients, help recreational users make better decisions about performing tasks such as driving after consuming cannabis, and help update the laws to better reflect the reality of cannabis impairment. That's key. Uh, THC can be detected in the body weeks after cannabis consumption, while it is clear that impairment lasts for a much shorter period of time. Psychopharmacologist Ian McGregor from the University of Sydney in Australia explained in 2021, Our legal framework probably needs to catch up with that, and, as with alcohol, focus on the interval when users are more of a risk to themselves and others. 
prosecution solely on the basis of presence of THC in blood or saliva is manifestly unjust, he said. A meta-analysis was needed. Reviewing and analyzing the relevant scientific literature, cross-referencing the results to arrive at a finding based on a broader array of methodologies and subjects in this case, people that can be covered in a single study. Uh, for this research, a team led by USYD nutritionist Danielle McCartney referenced 80 separate studies into impairment from tetrahydrocannabinol, THC the intoxicating compound in cannabis, performing the first meta-analysis of its kind. From those 80 papers, the team studied 1,534 performance outcomes from people who had taken cannabis. That is, how these people performed at driving or equivalent cognitive tasks at various stages after taking cannabis. How long the impairment lasted depended on three main factors— how strong the dose of THC was, whether the cannabis was inhaled or taken orally in the form of food, capsules, or drops, and whether the person was an occasional or regular user of cannabis. Our analysis indicates that impairment may last up to 10 hours if high doses of THC are consumed orally. A more typical duration of impairment, however, is four hours, when lower doses of THC are consumed via smoking or vaporization, and simpler tasks are undertaken, McCartney said. This impairment may extend up to six hours or seven hours if higher doses of THC are inhaled and complex tasks such as driving are assessed. Interestingly, regular users of cannabis can build up a tolerance and perform better at cognitive tasks than occasional users after consuming the same amount. It's therefore not easy to predict how much cannabis is going to impair a regular user as for how long, I'm sorry, or for how long, since they may take higher doses to reach the same level of intoxication as an occasional user. We found that impairment is much more predictable in occasional cannabis users than regular cannabis users, explained USYD behavioral pharmacologist Thomas Arkell. Heavy users show significant tolerance to the effects of cannabis on driving and cognitive function, while typically displaying some impairment. The findings suggest that most driving-related skills could return within five hours after inhaling cannabis, although this time may vary. More research will need to be conducted in the, into these time intervals for regular users in order to better characterize the effects of THC across the board. Once this is done, though, the information can guide legislation, the researchers said. Laws should be about safety on the roads, not arbitrary punishment, McGregor said. Given that cannabis is legal in an increasing number of jurisdictions, we need an evidence-based approach to drug driving laws. Logic. How about that? But people don't think logically. No, but That's that is so problem. logical. It's funny because we're in sales, both of us. Yeah. And you know what they tell you? Never never give logic in your selling. Yeah. Only tell uh, uh, fluff, basically like bells and whistles, oh. like you, feelings. You, you, sell on, you sell people. You sell feelings and the positive aspects right. and attributes. Versus yeah. logic because right. nobody wants to hear logic. My mentor told me that. JD, rest his soul. He goes, that's too logical. They can, and they can he figure that it. Like they know that for themselves, right? Like they can figure that out. You're not hiding no, anything. It's that's just, the problem. Most people don't figure that out. Right. They don't. But you're trying to give them a logical reason or an answer or something that, that actually is logical about what you're selling. Most of the time it's just about feelings. Like most of the time you're selling a feeling instead. You're, tell, you're selling a story that gives people a feeling. Right. Versus the logical reason why you should no, do No, I got to use logic with my sales. Sometimes. It's a house. <laughs> you got to be logical. How'd that go? <laughs> it's a house. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell from the south side. Yeah. It's a house. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a, it's a really good article, though. And I, when I was reading it before I sent it over to you, I was like, wow. I mean, people kind of wonder, you know, like, how long is this going to last me if I smoke? Mm -hmm. like, it's like I'm wondering how long this lady buzz high is going to get right. me right now because it's pretty good. Well, and for anyone who hasn't listened to us from like way back when, the reason, I mean, we smoke on the show because we're we a cannabis show <laughs> and we, <laughs> we enjoy, enjoy weed. It. But a lot of it, too, is we hope that like the newest listeners who tune in 
can recognize, like we talk about the strain we have, if we know what the effects are going to be, we talk about that. And then if we have like a dramatic effect from it, we usually talk about like how we're feeling from the strain. And then we go on to, you know, deliver the show. And so it, it's to, again, help break the stigma and educate people that smoking weed isn't going to make me slump on the couch and sleep. I can, still, I can still function. Yeah. Sometimes I stumble on my words because I'm high or I space out and I forget to, that we're having a conversation. Right. You know, you do stoner shit, but I can function. Like I, I'm all right. I'm here. I'm alive. You're I'm well. Right, spider. I'm all good. And if I got too high in about a half hour, I'll be not too high. Yeah, we'll be eating an edible you know? after the show and right. smoking more before we go to oh, bed. I'll be smoking more right. pretty soon. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, we smoke weed because we enjoy it. I remember the first episode we ever did uh, with when I did with Polly and Dav Boy and T and, and Shoddy. And we were just went around the room asking, you smoke weed because that was the line. And everybody who we invited, mm -hmm. I remember my answer was was back problems. That was just one point of the pr reason I smoked weed. I Before I had back problems, I was smoking weed because I loved it and I enjoyed mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. it made me just maybe more socially f like I was out. Comfortable. Able, yeah. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, besides that reason, but back injury, you know, but also helped me go to relax and go to sleep. Um, it's just nice. <laughs> it makes everything better. Well, we always say that we, we do use it medically, mm -hmm. but we also use it recreationally. Yeah. I, there's a different uh, approach really. And we use it both. Yeah. I love, I love to get freaking baked, completely baked. It's Great. super fun. Yeah. But I also like to be functional. Yeah. So there's a time and a place, and I like to have my ailments go away. And if weed helps with my pain and my sleep and my anxiety, like you'll throw the twenty to one in, yeah. in the daytime. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not feeling right, yep. and but you're you're still working. You and sometimes just I'll it. just hit the pen right. here and there. Like if it's just a day, I've got a headache, uh, whatever. Like my I can't focus. Hit the pen. Like nice little tap on the pen, and you know because it's right there. And then I that don't, I don't feel, I, I yeah, know. I don't feel stoned, but no. I, I feel you microdose it yeah. and get you back into the zone so you yeah. can concentrate. Cause you, your mind goes, <laughs> yeah, got a lot, I got a lot of things going on. You got a lot of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of work too. <laughs> That's true. So, um, yeah, I mean, it does help out a lot. I mean, I enjoy the fuck out of it. So, but that's the reason why I always ask people that came on the show, you smoked weed because why do you smoke it? Why do you like it? Do you, you mean? But that's just there's a reason why, or just I remember Matt, uh, Mr. G, came on. And he goes, "Cause I like it." <laughs> <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> Good enough reason. <laughs> hey. Thanks, Mr. G. So, but it's interesting though that to see like how long, like most people don't even know, like you know how long weed will last you. Yeah. You know, to me, for me, we last me a good like if we you and I smoke a joint, or we smoke a bowl, and uh, it probably lasts the high, like the, the the from the time I smoke it to the peak to the level to the probably good two to three hours. Yeah, I would say like the intense high, probably about thirty minutes. Thirty minutes to but an hour, depending on the strength. The rest of right. the high is about yeah. three hours. I would You're, say. Yeah, I mean, some people they only get twenty thirty minutes. Their and tolerance, they have a high tolerance. That's level. some. Yeah, it that's depends some. on the strength. Some people last five hours. Mm -hmm. That have a very low. I have, have. I was talking to somebody the other day. I have a very low tolerance for everything. Liquor, I was a I was a lightweight, you know. Uh, shots, pff, forget about it. Two shots, I'm sh shot, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I wasn't a very it, same thing with cannabis. I uh, people like you only take a ten milligram and it does. Yeah, I don't. And I smoke and eat every night, and I have mm -hmm. been smoking weed since I was thirteen years old. But I've always had a low tolerance for stuff. It's really weird. So I know people that can eat a thousand milligram like it's nothing. I'm like, you're out your mind. I'd be crying, you know, <laughs> in the corner, you know, in a ball, <laughs> knowing it's going to end sometime. But probably for me, that'd be a two day fucking high, maybe three. <laughs> I mean, the same thing with you. I mean, but oh, yeah. I think your tolerance has gotten up a little bit. Mine has gone up. Since you first started, like consistently smoking weed every day. Mm -hmm. I can see your tolerance even in edibles. You could probably throw down a 20 like it's nothing now. Yeah, but I also am using uh, a CBD, CBG True. tincture. You are. And that, like, the if CBD I've taken that, you know, late the in the day, yeah. then it's, like, almost not impossible to get high, but it it's very short-lived. Right. It's quick. So, yes, my tolerance has gone up, but I think it but has to do with that. also because of the CBD, mm -hmm. possibly. Yeah. yeah. It's it's interesting, though, like, how long people's tolerances, like I said, I know people that have, have to smoke all day long. Yeah, because their tolerance is so low or, or so high, 
you know. Mm-hmm. Sorry. <laughs> You're high. I hear you I'm shivering high. a little oh, bit. I'm, I'm a little high. You got the little I'm shivers? Good. No, I'm you good. good? I'm perfect. So do you know how much a QP of weed is? Uh, do you even know what a QP of weed is? The four ounces. F- quarter pound, yep, four right. ounces. Quarter quarter pound burger yeah. there. So, so, but I remember selling QP. Well, here's six grand, eight grand. Mm-hmm. No, Ten? no, you're you're way off. A pound of weed. <laughs> oh, a pound is probably six. A grand. pound, not anymore. A pound of weed, <laughs> <laughs> way off. So, oh, wait, hold on. No, a pound of weed in the '90s of yeah. like real good hydro that was going for at one time. I've seen it between forty five hundred to fifty five hundred. Yeah. That was 90, 93, 94 to about ninety eight. Okay. And then I saw prices go to like four, three to four thousand. It was getting more of abundance because uh, some states were starting to go medical, you know, in the 2000s. You know, California went medical in 96. Yeah. You started seeing a little bit more because people weren't getting in so much trouble. There was an abundance, not an abundance, but you start seeing price drop just a little bit. And then we, and then for a while there, I stayed, I just didn't buy pounds anymore, so I didn't really know what a pound was. But now a QP, though, was going for, in, up here in the Midwest, was going for about 1800 bucks. Yeah. 2000 for i'm talking about hydro i'm talking about mm-hmm. like i'm not talking about brick weed so and now prices depend on what state you're in now i'm not talking about traditional market i'm talking about like states like let's just say michigan a pound of weed can go from 500 to 1600 depending on the grower maybe to 2000 depending on the grower qp now you can get for 250 depending on who you're buying it from to th- to maybe still a thousand bucks i don't know the don't 250 would be like a wholesale to a dispensary or no, you're talking about the, the customer about, in the dispensary market. you're talking about traditional, traditional market. there's the difference yeah. yeah dispensary weed in illinois in illinois is absolutely ridiculous yeah the pricing the pound per pricing if you bought a pound it would be six grand mm, probably close enough five yeah. Probably. Probably. I mean, an eighth year is on average is 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. An ounce is an ounce of, let's say, mediocre weed is 250 still. Yeah. So you're talking that's, you know, a thousand bucks, a QP for, for cultivation here in Illinois. So I, I'm not 100% accurate in all my pricing. This is stuff that I've read, stuff that I've seen, stuff that I, you know, you, you equate when you, go to mm-hmm. a, when you go to a dispensary and what they're charging. You know, so a QP to me is you, you can visit a dispensary for cannabis. You're presumably going to examine examine little estimations of weed. You see what an eighth price is. You see, you hardly ever see grams anymore. I like a gram. Grams in Illinois are expensive, but 20 bucks. I used to buy a gram here and there because I didn't, never wanted to buy an eighth because if I didn't like the weed, I would want to smoke an eighth of it. Like so a dime bag. An eighth, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, an eighth is an eighth, but you talk about a gram, yes, a yeah. dime bag. But Illinois, they should be 10 bucks. In Illinois, they're 20. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> so this is called a 20 bag. <laughs> so, and also but, a dime bag was a long time ago. Yeah, but still yeah. people buy dimes here and there, you know. So all in all, how much is a QP of weed truly? One, uh, on the chance that you have a QP of weed, you have a quarter pound of weed. That is one-fourth of a pound, and a pound is 16 ounces. In this way, you fundamentally have four ounces of weed if you have a QP, which emerges to be a little more than 113 grams. Okay? Where yeah. was I? We were, at, we were somewhere. I'm not going to mention where, but we, they were selling ounces. Mm-hmm. Ounces were ranging at this event we went to anywhere between 200 to 400, depending on what you were buying and who you were buying it from. So um, it's making some good money. Mm-hmm. How much is a quarter pound of weed contrasted with a quarter? A fraction of weed is uh, utilized concerning a quarter ounce of weed, which is around seven grams. This is generally enough for around seven dulls. In the case that you're shopping at a Canada dispensary and see what's named as a quarter offered to be purchased, you're taking a gander at a quarter ounce and certainly not a quarter pound. So remember that when you go across the border to the north. A QP is much more weed as anything but a weed dispensary in California are lawfully permitted to sell. Uh, What does it resemble? It's really uh, a weed. It's really a ton for some people. Uh, it's quite a bit, and it's a lot of weed for some people. You've seen what a QP looks like. You've mm-hmm. seen actually what a pound looks like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. um, it's a lot of weed. For you and I to have a QP, that would last as a hot minute. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, so for some people, though, different story. Some people, it's only going to last them maybe a month. Right. 
It depends on how much. I mean, I met a kid that smokes an ounce a day. And just burning all day long. Shoo. That's expensive. <laughs> I think there's people like that that it's almost like a cigar. They just have one lit. Yeah. They're not necessarily puffing on it the entire time, but they've just got one going. Yeah. But mm -hmm. when you're smoking those big backwoods, you put a lot of weed in that shit. Yeah. So. Uh, so just think about it this way. Just get what you pay for at, at dispensaries. An eighth, a quarter, a penny, a cut, a squat. Individuals start using a wide range of dialect to elude of how much weed they're getting or the total amount they have. While the vast majority know a term or two, things will get somewhat strange when you're at a dispensary and you have no idea how to request, how much bud you truly care about. Sit back, relax, and just ask your bud tenders. Look online. You know, most people in Illinois that I see are buying eights. Hmm. Most people in Michigan now are buying ounces. Because you can buy it's, ounces. It's affordable. You can buy ounces for 75 to 100 bucks at dispensaries. Right. Is the weed great? It's probably good smokable weed. Mm -hmm. Let's just put it that way. It could be complete garbage. Mm -hmm. I have not bought an ounce from a Michigan dispensary, so I don't know. But it could be really good. And I heard if you're buying really good Michigan ounces, you're spending 250 to 300 mm -hmm. But that's for, like, super duper. It probably can even go a little bit more, depending on the grower. So, excuse me. Um, but, yeah, so just, you know, know your numbers. Know what you're looking for. Know what state you're going to to where you can get more for your bang for your buck. A lot of people go east mm -hmm. <laughs> a couple mm -hmm. states over <laughs> to get their weed. <laughs> Save a lot of money. You ain't paying those Illinois taxes. Right. You know, some people have no choice, though. They got to come from the north down. They got to come from the west in. Some people come from the border of the other I, Indiana, in, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, I mean, they got they, got, they don't want to drive, you know. I would drive an extra hour if I'm saving that kind of money. <laughs> so um, how do you do a, a detox? All right. You want to know? Yeah. I mean, I've never done a cannabis detox before. I mean, I, when I, want to do, I mean I've done like a, a day here in the mm -hmm. last five years where I took one full day off or two. I've never done a detox, though. Um, oh, actually, no, I did. You've done <laughs> detox? Yeah, I did. I have had to. But it's been but it, yeah. It's been a long time. It's been time. a long time. Yeah. I mean, probably 15 years. Yeah. You brought like the, uh, the I bought, hair kit back. I bought the home, hair like kit. The shampoo. I bought the pills. Yeah. Uh, I, I almost went and got the whizzer <laughs> and had someone pee in it. Do you know what the whizzer is? So like the, a bag. So basically, it's a bag you tie around your waist that stays like somewhat hot to keep your pee at the temperature you need. I know guys that work in, in unions that this is what they use. And you have somebody that will piss clean in there. You've got, you got like an hour. To get to your piss test and you just fucking piss it out and clean oh you piss clean every time. It's called the wizard. <laughs> it's called the wizard. <laughs> Tell us about the detox. All right. Cannabis detox we're talking about. How to get THC out of your system. Whether you need a tolerance reset or you're looking for a holistic cleanse, maybe you need to pass a drug test, there are multiple reasons why you may want to engage in a cannabis detox. But when it comes to how long this process could take, there are a number of factors at play. There are plenty of THC detox products available, marketing themselves as fast-acting ways to rid your body of cannabis. However, these goods aren't regulated by the FDA, and there's no real science to back up their claims. The only guaranteed way to detox cannabis is to abstain. Having said that, it is possible to help your body process cannabis in a quick and efficient manner. If you're ready for a detox, this may be this guide may be just the ticket. Cannabis can remain in the body for as little as a few days and as long as a few months. It depends on several different factors, including frequency of use, body mass, and metabolism rates, and methods of consumption. THC, the active compound in cannabis, is fat-soluble. This means the molecules get stored in fat deposits throughout the body. It also explains why THC is often infused in butter and other oils. It just sticks better to fat. People who smoke regularly or eat cannabis regularly and have slower metabolisms will need, will need the most time for a full detox of THC. However, even infrequent cannabis users may have traces of THC in their systems long after they have consumed. For people who are subject to, to drug tests, this can be a major concern. There are several different types of drug screens, with some being more sensitive to THC than others. Urine testing is one of the most common forms of drug testing. It analyzes metabolites in urine for the presence of drugs. 
Depending on the test, THC may be detected anywhere from a few days to a month post-consumption. Blood tests are often used by law enforcement or the medical community. While analysis can vary, one 29, I'm sorry, uh, 2009 study showed that THC can be found in blood samples six days after use. Other tests may be positive even longer after consumption. Hair follicle drug tests are some of the most controversial, due in part to the fact that they can be accurate. Uh, they can be some of the most inaccurate. I'm sorry. THC may be present in hair up to 90 days after consumption. However, it's possible for secondhand smoke to result in a positive test. People subject to hair testing should steer clear of a sesh. So don't even go around weed. Uh, mouth swabs are typically used to detect recent consumption. Some law enforcement agencies are even starting to try THC saliva tests during suspected cannabis DUI cases. However, whether they're accurately proving impairment is dicey. Tests can vary, but one study found people tested positive for cannabis eight days after their last toke. There are many THC detox methods, ranging from natural body processes to drinks promising to cleanse the system. And while there are plenty of anecdotal reports of people purging the weed out quickly, the only foolproof way is time, and plenty of it. Getting cannabis out of your system isn't a fast process. It can take days and even weeks. Aside from abstaining completely from cannabis and avoiding secondhand smoke, here are some other steps that you can take to flush weed from your body. Regular exercise is one of the best ways to boost your metabolism and, by proxy, get THC out of your system. Not to mention the fact that cannabinoids are stored in fat cells. Theoretically, the fewer you have, the fewer places THC has to hide. Another great way to promote metabolism is through food. When you eat meals high in fat and sugar, it takes longer for your body to process toxins. Maintaining a healthy diet of vegetables, grains, and fruits is sure to get you closer to your detox goals. Hydration is one of the keys to overall health, especially during a detox process. Drink plenty of water, but don't feel the need to chug gallons a day. While staying hydrated helps, it's not going to flush your system completely. It's also possible to overdo it on water. Yes, you can actually overdose on water. THC detox drinks are marketed to people who need to pass a drug test fast. While they, the promise is never guaranteed, many anecdotal reviewers swear by this quick fix. These products typically complain, contain a blend of herbal extracts thought to promote liver function, a key to detoxification processes. This often includes milk thistle, dandelion root, ginseng, cranberry, and turmeric. Vitamins and minerals such as B12 are typically added as well. There are several issues with THC detox products, even if users claim they work wonders. The main issue is the unregulated nature of the industry. You simply don't know for sure that the drinks are safe or effective. They may also lead to side effects such as a stomach upset. Some may also produce irregular urine. Think radioactive green. <laughs> nice. Which may arouse suspicion from drug testers and could lead to automatic failure, especially if you're on probation. That's not to say that you can't create your own detoxifying beverages at home to help promote the flushing of THC from your system. Teas made with lemon juice, turmeric, ginger, and cayenne pepper can help promote liver function. A spoonful of apple cider vinegar is also a great help. But when it comes to THC detox kits bought online, buyer beware. I take all you that. You take all that stuff I, every I day. I actually do take, take that every day. I, I, I make a tea, and it's made with lemon juice, turmeric, ginger, cayenne pepper, and actually about 12 other things mm -hmm. in there also. But when I when you were reading that, and when I read it, too, I started, I'm like, I take that yep. every day. You, got <laughs> you it should all actually take it every day. <laughs> I feel wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Detoxing THC from your body can be inspired by many things. A much-needed tea break, an upcoming... Oh, didn't I just read that? Oh, yes. A much-needed tea break, an upcoming drug test. We're just recapping. And health concerns are just a few. So just remember, it can be a long-term process. Months may pass before you are actually clear from cannabis. While cannabis is not considered to be addictive, heavy consumers may suffer from withdrawal symptoms like irritability, in days after their last toke. However, 
These are mostly thought to be psychological and not physical um, symptoms. The cannabis detox journey takes time and products that promise a quick fix may or may not provide the desired results. Lifestyle changes and abstinence are the best way to detox from THC. Just remember that if you light up again, your tolerance might not be where it was before. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, those nutrients I was talking about that I take, mm -hmm. I take it fresh. Well, I chop it all up and put it in the freezer so it's freshly frozen. Mm -hmm. But if you can't get that stuff and you can buy the spices, the powders, yeah. buy the, the oh, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's almost, it's, I've heard it's just as good. Right. So, um, so try those spices, the ginger alone, the best digestion. I have no digestion issues. And apple cider vinegar. Oh, yeah, I take that sure. too. Yeah. I mean, but, but no digestion issues at all. Mm -hmm. And I take ginger five days a week, fresh, freshly frozen ginger. I don't do it seven days a week. You just, just, just need to. Failure. No, that's not. I, I know you. I know you are. But you know the <laughs> no, reason. I'm not. You know the reason why. <laughs> I don't. You don't need to take it seven days right. a week. So it's in your system. So, uh, but do if you have digestion issues, or I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you. It. I believe in a lot of Eastern medicine. Mrs. Weedman knows this. We practice a lot of Eastern medicine, and uh, some of those herbs and and natural spices is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Besides the herb mm -hmm. we smoke every day. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Iowa, one of the worst medical cannabis programs in the United States. Like, there's mm. only four dispensaries, medical dispensaries, and it's like you can hardly get it. It's brutal. But anyway, you can buy so much hemp derived THC drinks and edibles legal in Iowa, and everyone's asking how are they different from what's the thing you asked me again today? What's the difference between Delta, Delta, 8, nine? Delta 9? Yeah, and we yeah. went through it again. Yeah. But the THC market has been growing so fast. And especially in Iowa and a lot of states. And here's the difference between the products. Uh, so a growing number of hemp-based products and places to buy them in Iowa over the last year says at least one thing about consumers. More and more, they're becoming A-OK -okay with THC. So, uh, but the United States continues to muddle through patchwork of state-by-state -state cannabis legalization. The emerging hemp-based market generating a new buzz has prompted confusion. Everybody's confused. From THC and CBD to Delta 8, Delta 9, it can be hard to discern legal products from legal illegal ones. This is why I was laughing because you were yeah, in the kitchen when you were coming home from the grocery store. We had, I'm like, don't worry, I'm going to be talking about it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I actually gave you this article. Um, so in Iowa, just like we've seen in a lot of other states, this is not just Iowa. It's just, it's just you're just seeing it more and more. A series uh, from the Gazette that seeks to answer uh, questions about the state, its culture, and the people who live there about the enforcement of hemp-based THC products, manufacturers, and local brewers. So they're asking around. Hemp plants and marijuana plants are part of the same species. The main difference is the concentration of the tetrahydrocannabinol, the psychoactive element that gives users the high. Hemp has less than 0.3% THC by weight. Cannabis or, or marijuana, whether sold in states that have legalized it for recreational use or sold under Iowa's medical cannabis program, has more than 0.3% THC. Right? But that's the legal limit mm -hmm. that was set by the federal government. I There's hemp plants that have more THC in it, higher CBD, but bigger ratios. This Farmers just, are pushing for uh, like 1%. 1%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was 0.3% is a joke, and it's mm -hmm. hard. <laughs> so to get that just exact 0.3%, so at least you have that buffer. Everybody likes a good buffer. <laughs> I especially like a good buffer. A good buffer. <laughs> it's good for everybody. <laughs> um, so hemp legalized federally, you know, in 2018, and uh, uh, there is now flavored, flavored drinks, seltzers, chocolate bars, caramels, candies, everything you see in a dispensary from – the sativa plant you're seeing come from the hemp mm -hmm. plant now. So most drinks on the shelves today offer THC doses to five to 10 milligrams because milligrams is not, is not actually illegal by the federal government. It's, it's percentage. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're able to have the milligram doses you have from coming from the THC hemp plant. Cause it's not illegal. So there's business development. One Oh one find what works, mm -hmm. not loopholes. They found a business development. What worked. Mm-hmm. There's no law saying you can't do this. Right. So while hemp is limited to by its THC concentration, there's no limit on the number of milligrams an individual product can be made with. There's your. There's our answer that we've been trying to find out for so long. 
and talking about on so many different shows, like where's that, that, that business development? Milligram doses is not illegal. It's great. <laughs> so you're seeing all these THC products growing in, 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 in now Iowa a lot. And people are able to get their medicine instead of trying to get a med card, which hmm. is next to impossible too. That's good. Ah, I think it's great. How long will it stay legal? We shall see. Yeah. <laughs> so the New York regulators will issue dozens, actually a hundred cannabis licenses finally. And they finally. are being issued. And uh, so finally you get a hundred. They need to have like 1,200. <laughs> yeah. As many as you have in Oklahoma and you don't need that many. Because only four four hundred thousand patients, New York. There's just in New York City alone. There's what six million people. Yeah, you could probably have five hundred there, and it probably still wouldn't be enough. There's a lot of weed smokers, and it's just the city alone. So, um, in Florida, the state Senate members gave the green light on Thursday to bills that regulate hemp products statewide. Here it comes. The, now Florida is. You were just down there, and you saw all the THC stuff. Well, the thing they're going to change is. To, uh, Florida moves to regulate THC content, ban Delta A products, hmm. right? Uh, so State Senator Colleen ben Burton, her bill is SB 9 1698, uh, restrictions on THC content, hemp-derived products sold in smoke shops across Florida. Sales of Delta A products are prohibited under the measure. Hmm. And now Ralph Ma So it's all right if they're shutting they're it down. This down. This well, is all being this is all the bills. It's already in, all, in all motion. In motion. Wow. So House members approved HB 1269 uh, at the same day. The measure seeks a way to pave the, for a potential ban on dispensary sales of adult-use cannabis flour containing more than 30% THC. Hmm. So when it goes legal, because they know they think the vote's going to went pass in November, so they're already getting ready. And yeah, they're protecting pass. that. Right. So 30. You're not. Hmm. So recreational is not going to get past 30%. Hmm. So in this state, you can. There's, people are buying 37%. So. Uh, just on straight flour. That's not including like uh, gummies. And no, no, infused pre rolls and all that kind of oh. stuff. I'm just talking just straight up THC. So that means uh, that's just flour, though. That's not concentrates. So no more than thirty percent. Uh, the legislation would also enforce an upper limit of sixty percent THC on other cannabis products, while edibles would be required to have a serving size of ten milligrams of THC or below. Hmm. So. Uh, Maryland legislators proposed bill to secure schools from nearby marijuana dispensaries. South Dakota takes a stand against conflicts of interest in medical marijuana. Man, South Dakota, you went from going to be great to just like fucking it all up <laughs> with all yeah. your laws and every change, change everything. California tax authorities to auction seize cannabis assets over unpaid bills. Yeah, they're just. There's a lot of unpaid bills, too, in California, so there's going to be a lot of seizing going on. Georgia, $150 million class action lawsuit against uh, a few companies that are selling hemp-derived cannabis products, but actually they're saying that it's basically coming from the cannabis plant, and they're deceiving everybody. I'm not going to mention the two companies because just you can find the article yourself or go look up in Georgia who, who they're suing. So, um, But, yeah, so they're saying it's a bait and switch. <laughs> so the legal cannabis businesses are suing but the... No, the, the state. Delta eight. No, the oh, state. The, state, is the doing. state, and it's because they're doing the delta nine THC right. coming from hemp. But they, but people are saying it's actually not. It's coming from the the bait and switch. They're actually putting real TH, THC from the marijuana sativa plant in there, right. and they're just telling people it's coming from the hemp <clears throat> plant. Sure. And uh, there is, it just started going legal, and uh, more and more a little bit in Georgia. It's not fully there. You know, you got to buy it from pharmacies, but then the DA shut it down. So that whole fucking shit is all a mess too. So we're just <laughs> bait and switch, nothing. Just legalize yeah. it in Georgia. Oh my God, you would, your tax revenue would be amazing. Uh, a Republican plan to legalize medical marijuana in Wisconsin is dead. Yeah, so shot sad. Down. So sad to Didn't hear that. Didn't even get a blaze of glory. You know, no. just shot down. Just done. Done. Fucking and it had dead. like momentum for a hot. Well, because they can't come across the table and make shit work. And how they wanted state-run cannabis <laughs> shops. Oh, geez. state-run. That's dumb. <sighs> so anyway, <laughs> uh, New Hampshire and national trends. New Hampshire's latest attempt to legalize cannabis reflecting ongoing <laughs> legislative challenges and shifting perspective among lawmakers. Boo. Uh, what else here? What else is going on? South Carolina Senate votes to legalize medical <coughs> cannabis. But their whole laws and everything are just terrible, you know? And uh, what they're going to, what they're trying to get it's basically like it's really bad <laughs> there's gonna be like no ailments but like five to start but it's something right 
I, I don't even want to say something's better than nothing because it's just it's, it's, it's just yeah. it's just something. <laughs> uh, marijuana decriminalization bill with bipartisan support introduced in Wyoming House. Cool. Be like Montana, sort of. They're doing pretty good. Uh, New Jersey weed businesses to rake in one billion this year, says regulators. We'll see. Nevada issues first license to a lounge in Las Vegas where cannabis can be consumed recreationally. Wait, I thought there's already lounges open in Vegas. Not, uh, not, not like a freestanding. There's no consumption. No, this would be the first one. I thought Plano 13 had one. Already. They've got the license. Oh, so they didn't got open it. yet though. Arizona eyes interstate cannabis commerce awaits federal legalization move. They're ready, just like California, Oregon, and Washington. They're all waiting. They all got an excess amount of weed. They know where they're going. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like I talked about in the prior episode, though, it's going to be up to the state to say they want it or how they're going to run it. Just because you got that weed and you want to go across state lines, there's a lot to organize. Lot. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, this is big. New Hampshire House to vote Thursday on marijuana legalization. Come on, New Hampshire. After I just said. A little bit. I saved this, though, because I want people to get excited who live in New Hampshire. <laughs> this could happen. This could be big. So let's go, New Hampshire, and make sure that it's home grow. Lots of home grow. Because <laughs> a lot of people live where there's no towns in New Hampshire. They live in the woods. Let mm -hmm. them home grow. Can grow some great weed in those woods. <laughs> um, so New York uh, is okaying uh, marijuana home grow. You can, you can only have like six plants or eight plants and but you can have, hold up to five pounds of weed hmm. <laughs> that's so silly that's dumb right <laughs> <laughs> i want to hold five pounds of weed and not get in any trouble <laughs> so i'm saying like just the average consumer can have five pounds average home grow you can have five pounds but you can only have five plants Six plants or something like that. I don't even want to read it anymore. Because oh when God. I read five pounds, I was like, I want to okay. hold five pounds yeah. in my house. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Come over anytime. <laughs> oh, man. And not get in any trouble? Right. Good Lordy. <laughs> Just bricks. We'd be having lots of fun <laughs> over in this house. Um Oh, my cheeks hurt on that one. Uh, federally funded research discovers two new methods of distinguishing hemp and marijuana to assist what, Ms. Wee Man? Crime labs. Crime and vet. You were a big Dexter fan. Oh, I love Dexter. You love Dexter. Mm -hmm. You love that crime scene murder. You like murder mysteries. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. So this is like right. That's why I gave you this article. I'm like, Thanks. this is right up our alley. Yep. Federally funded researchers have identified new methods of distinguishing between cannabis and hemp by detecting the exact amount of THC in flour and edibles. The National Institute of Justice, which is part of the Justice Department, is promoting the results of the two research projects it funded focused on cannabis lab testing, which it is now sharing with select law enforcement agencies. The aim of the initiatives was to streamline the testing process to help resolve crime lab backlogs that have increased since hemp containing up to 0.3% THC was federally legalized under the 2018 Farm Bill, complicating cannabis-related cases. Current testing methods aren't able to measure the exact amount of THC present in a sample, NIJ said in an update posted on Tuesday, but the researchers they funded have now discovered that they can isolate the THC content as well as other cannabinoids using two different types of mass spectrometry. The GC-MS method was developed by a team at the National Institute of Standards and Technology. They were able to extract THC from a sample and apply the test to find the exact cannabinoid content. DOJ first announced in 2020 that it would be granting NIST $350,000 in funding for the research. The DART-HRMS tactic, meanwhile, could help to address another cannabis testing complication that's emerged in forensic labs. It allowed researchers to determine the amount of THC present in baked goods, candies, beverages, and plant materials with minimal pretreatment steps. Rabbi Musa, the lead researcher with the DART HRMS team anticipates that the increased speed of using this 
uh, to detect D THC in cannabis samples could reduce sample testing backlogs and chemical reagent costs and streamline sample analysis protocols, the NIJ said. The GCMS method has already led to the creation of new standard operating procedures for labs, and the results have been incorporated into training practices for the Montgomery County Police Department and Maryland State Police. U.S. Customs and Border Protection are also uh, putting out a solicitation, or they did in 2022, seeking portable cannabis analyzers to quickly identify cannabinoid profiles and help distinguish between cannabis and hemp. The DEA separately announced in 2019 that it was seeking a device to provide specific specificity to distinguish. That word always gets me too. Specificity, yes, <laughs> to distinguish between hemp and marijuana since the former crop was legalized. The complications resulting from hemp legalization became especially apparent in Texas, where cannabis possession arrests fell almost 30 percent from 2018 to 19 following the state-level legalization of the non-intoxicating cannabis crop. Prosecutors in the state dismissed hundreds of low-level cannabis cases since hemp was legalized. And officials announced in 2020 that labs wouldn't be performing tests in misdemeanor cases, with the Department of Public Safety saying it will not have the capacity to accept those. Meanwhile, hemp industry stakeholders and agricultural officials across the U.S. are urging Congress to triple the THC limit for the crop to 1% by dry weight. A Justice Department researcher recently questioned the rationale for the current 0.3% THC limit, which she said seemed to be based arbitrarily on a decades-old anecdote. Hmm. Pretty good. Yep. You know, I know you like that. That crime lab stuff. <laughs> <laughs> International news. U.S. Virgin Islands pushes forward on stalled law allowing recreational marijuana use because they realize most of their uh, tourism is from the United States and Canada. And they're arresting people for for this when they should be like wanting – people are going to stop coming <clears throat> basically. Right. So right. they're trying to get it fully legalized. They're good because then maybe I'll come visit. <laughs> <laughs> Russia arrests German man for carrying cannabis gummy bears. They even caught the gummy. <laughs> man, they catch people with the pens. The basketball That's one player. Thing. Right, right. But man, well, reading this, the fucking idiot though brought it in a bag that said THC on oh, it. Oh, Jesus. Right. <laughs> you need to listen to my show. You need to listen to the we we've taught like how to travel with weed. And especially edibles. It's not that hard to put gummy bears in a Haribo gummy bear package. And they were saying that it reeked like, you, man, then you're getting some ter terrible gummies. <laughs> if you're telling me it reeked like weed and they caught you. No, they caught you because I see the bag on the article. It said it had a cannabis leaf on there and it said 600 milligrams. <laughs> uh, uh, rookie fucking mistake <laughs> that that is a rookie mistake for sure <laughs> now you're gonna pay for it in a russian jail because they're saying you can get up to like seven years oh my gosh for 600 milligrams of, of edible what like, country was he from Ru germany wow oh man they might they'll make a trade uh thai government could face thousands of lawsuits over cannabis po policy reversal you know they're reversing it, right? It's only going to be medical. So, But they don't realize how many businesses are in Thailand now. They're going to bankrupt the bankroll the government. I mean, you're going to be fucked. So just let it mean don't, – don't fuck it up. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> I want to go to Thailand so bad. Um, Philippine House of Representatives Joint Committee passes medical cannabis bill. Who mm -hmm. would have thought? Because you got caught with weed. You get, you get shot on the street. Mm -hmm. Remember that president? Mm -hmm. Now they're gonna leave. There's seven thousand islands in the Philippines, yes. and to go and live in the Philippines and be able to smoke weed, it costs like they were saying to rent a place in the Philippines like five hundred bucks a month for like a beautiful like full blown condo with gym, pool, overlooking the beach. Hmm. Meals are like three bucks. You feed yourself like nothing there, and you can make a, a, a living like doing your own work there too. Yeah, you'd have to work remotely. Yeah, of course. Mm. Unless you got a couple mil in the bank and then you just go there and you just live you're tired. Well, <laughs> okay. You know, two tree <laughs> mil, you'd be all right. <laughs> so but that'd be great if they medically legalized it there. It's gonna be amazing. 
Spain health ministry moves to regulate medical marijuana and more cannabis news across Europe. Czech Republic hemp group warns about intoxicating hemp products. Spain ministry of health will regulate medical marijuana. Man, oh, can't wait. Just going, going back. We're going back. What was that market we went to? In Spain? Yeah. Uh, St. Andrew's market? Wasn't that the St. Andrew's market? Yeah, I think it was. We had delicious sangria and we oh, ate delicious it. seafood and we ate the meat. And mm. oh my gosh. Amazing. European Union partially greenlights European cannabis initiative. Sweet. British Columbia allows promotion of outdoor cannabis consumption areas. Sweet. President Zelensky signs law on legalizing medical cannabis. Wow. Doing something with that $113 yeah. billion dollars we sent over there. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to save his country. I know he is. I'm just kidding. He really is. I'm just kidding. But he feels that it's going to help people with PTSD and everything that's going on in this country. That's so that's good. He's very human. Yes. I like him. Um, how old do you think I am in the marijuana world? <laughs> how old do you think you are in the marijuana world? How old do you think like anybody is right, in the marijuana right. world these days? Well, actually, I was thinking of this like on a on a. This article talks about like that, right? Um, I was thinking how much you hear, you kind of hear people challenging one another. Well, I've been around weed longer than you. They don't say that, but they're basically saying that. Like, well, I've been around it for 20 years. I've been around it since I was five. I've been around it since I was 80. Uh, whatever. Like, whatever they're, they just want to claim their stake in the history of cannabis, of course. which is super cool because people are really passionate about it. But there's so many of us, and so many of us were consumers, closeted consumers. It wasn't something that you talked about before. So people like to just tell their stories and tell their tales. And right. I think establishing that they've been around it for a long time is really just them saying, like, dun, dun, yeah, dun. yeah, well, like, I've been here. I've done this. Like, this yeah. isn't new. Right. It's just new the way it is now. Right. Yeah. So let's talk about it. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So how old are you in the marijuana world? Age is revealed in a variety of ways, habits, and language. So how old are you in the weed world? The internet is filled with memes and telltale signs of age giveaways. From watching TV, that's in quotes, watching TV, to teenage ninja mutant turtles, uh, to calling someone on the phone to order a pizza, it pegs you into a certain age category. Well, the same is starting to be true in the world of weed. In reviewing the data from BDSA, a leading analytic firm that covers cannabis, there are hints of generational differences, and it's upending the industry. The habits of millennials, Gen Z, and Gen X have already changed food, magazines, communication, and careers, and now a change has arrived for weed. How many people consume cannabis is generally falling into two major age buckets, or not how many in number, how many people like consume how many of us consume does that make sense i'm still pretty high it makes sense it's falling into two age buckets and companies will be made or broken by these trends the 45 plus crowd tends to smoke cannabis they enjoy the smell of flour and the act of preparation be it a joint a bowl or a bong and the feel of the smoke it's filled with nostalgia and tradition for this crowd, edibles were usually homemade and also a little bit risky. You never knew how it would hit you. So getting stoned was often an, an adventure. The under 45 set looks for something which is an easy, on-the-go kind of lifestyle product. Uh, vapes and edibles are easy to carry and can be slipped into a pocket or bag. Almost 90% of all edibles purchased are gummies. These forms provide a manageable high, they're discreet, and they don't smell. Also, through legalization, weed consumers can fully understand dosage and have the ability to microdose. 90%. Yeah, crazy. Whew. Older users tend to talk about smoking, while younger ones talk about popping a gummy or taking a hit. Another interesting point, Gen Z is entering the age of cannabis use, and there is significantly less stigma to using it now uh, more so than even 20 years ago. They see it as a healthy alternative to drinking. Now, decreases in alcohol consumption by Gen Z coincide with an uptick in cannabis use, according to numerous reports. Is this a one-for-one -one trade in substances? Some signs point that way. 
Currently, flour is the most profitable product for dispensaries and gummies are the least. This has a direct impact on production <laughs> and sales. So it could be interesting to watch the industry as it continues to expand. Change is inevitable, even in the cannabis world. You guys sell a lot yeah. of volume of gummies to make some money mm -hmm. in this country. And I'll, I am very much on board with, with this article because we are just over 50. And most people our age and older that we come across that maybe don't consume regularly when you offer them a gum and they're like, oh, no. And then they're like, oh, I had a brownie one time. They're, everyone has that story. Everyone has that story of mm -hmm. having a brownie or a cookie. They had too much. They ended up in a closet, like, you know, totally <laughs> paranoid. <laughs> so, yes, totally. And then the younger crowd, definitely. It's just so much more um, comfortable for them to be out in the public. Like most people our age and older, like when we've invited people to cannabis events, they're like, you like all go there and then you smoke and consume together. Like <laughs> that's, that's your family. <laughs> yeah. That's my family. <laughs> no, there's a lot of people, people who are newer consumers who <laughs> yes. old, like our age and older who just maybe do consume because they've learned to microdose right. with gummies and they're, or they're five milligram gummy eaters or 10 milligram. And they're like, Oh, like you go to these events. Like we, yeah. You know what I mean? There is definitely yeah. like a, a yeah, I know what you're saying. a I different just, way of consuming and a different attitude towards it with the different age groups. Yes. And it's cool to see that the generation Zers and, and younger will never know if they're in a state that's le it's legal. They'll never know illegal weed or, you know, they'll, they'll learn some history about it, but they'll be like, oh, really? Well, they I won't understand. Right. They'll know. They'll be like, oh, I prefer weed than anything else. Yeah. Because that's. Like they won't be concerned about what other people right, think when they use it. Right, because they're gonna go to high school or they're gonna go to college, and there's gonna somebody that's gonna have a cartridge or a pen, and they'll be like, "Hey, you want some weed? Yeah." And they're not pulling out a joint. It'll they're, be they're interesting. Pulling out a, they're yeah. pulling out a gummy, or they're pulling out a uh, they're pulling out a, a, a rosin pen, and going, "Oh, try this. This is your first time. Yep, yeah, hit it light, you know, kind of thing." Or I wonder it, how, like, what kind of impact that will have on college, like, uh, party life, college party life in America. In legal states, in well, maybe of, in in about like ten years. Well, here because the way. kids now that are born, that, hang on, weed has been legal here recreationally since what year? Twenty twenty. Yeah. And so let's all these all these babies, all these COVID babies, when they go off to college. So in twenty years, they go off to college. They've only been around legal cannabis. They're raised where they don't know the difference. And I guess that would have to do with household, right, and the environment they're raised in. But let's just say the kids whose families are indifferent about it, the kids who would typically go off to college and drink, engage in drinking. I wonder what that college experience is going to be like in, say, 20 years and how different it'll be. Well, yeah, I mean, like parties the, will be different. Well, they're going to a party and they'll be an eight I'm sure they'll tray still, on the table yeah, with right? a bunch of weed around. <laughs> no, seriously, with right. a bunch of weed around with probably yeah. 10 different strains that people right. bought or pre-rolls. And there might even be like here in our studio, there's a weed bar. Well, I know what there that would be, look like. I, I'm just interested in seeing like that happen. I, I mean, I'm sure it already is. Yeah. I'm sure it already has happened in certain states. I'm sure there's college parties oh, where, yeah. it's a where it's weed, just a, a weed party. Yeah. And I mean, I went to just weed parties back in when I was younger. My night there was very little booze and it was just weed and there might have been psychedelics too, but no one was really drinking. It was more for that kind of a party. You know, there was stuff like that back then, back when I was 18, 19, 20, I was going to parties like that. Yeah, but that. you're not following. I'm saying, like, these are kids that are going to grow up. And not have to worry about it. They don't know anything right. about it yeah, being I illegal. Yeah, I get it. 100%. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be, It'll like, be just more, so different. It's more of a norm. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. You know, like, I didn't get smashed and put my head through a fucking windshield, you know, kind I'm of thing. I'm just interested in seeing what that's going to look I like. Went, I went to a party and got really baked and ate, yeah, a, bunch hung of, out. ate a bunch of good yeah. food and chilled and watched some good movies. You know, and that's what partying is going to be like. And somehow, yeah. Yeah. Like there will be frat houses that are like weed frat houses. Yeah, absolutely. And, and sororities you, they, and things. They, and you'll come there and it'll be out on the bar. Right. You know, all the time. Yeah. So we like going on dates. Dates. Yeah, we go date nights every once in a while, we right? We like it. And here's some stuff just to, you know, I always, you know, warmer weathers right now, you know, and it's 60 today in <laughs> Illinois in February. Can't beat it. I mean, I ain't complaining. Are you complaining? No, I'm not complaining. Hell no. No. But right now, you know, we got spring coming up and there's some stuff you can do. Picnics with a view. Consumption friendly meals. 
there's a bunch of dinners now you can go to mm-hmm. consumption, you know, uh, infused meal dinners places mm-hmm. now, which is great. Again, not necessarily advertised to the public. You have to find you them, have to find but them. they're there. Um, I saw somebody today post this, and I was this is, was one of them. Uh, they were at an aquarium in the bathroom doing hitting uh, their puffco, whatever, mm-hmm. but a marijuana at the museum. <laughs> kind of fun. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. If they did an adult night. Oh, it'd be great. Uh, inf- can infuse carnivals, you know, <laughs> uh, concerts, paint paint nights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've seen those. Mm-hmm. Uh, cocktail, cannabis cocktail nights. Mm-hmm. We've seen that with art, art fairs and stuff mm-hmm. like that, which are really fun. Uh, so that's just some suggestions if you're looking to do some things that involve cannabis on a date night. And not even think about it instead mm-hmm. of like, this is fun stuff to do on a date or go as friends or whatever. But I mean, it's kind of nice. Yeah. Just good. Some fun ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Before we end the show, I have to say one thing. Tennessee. How could you arrest Hootie and the yeah. Blowfish? Yeah, how he's one. He has one of the like famous one hit songs of all time, right? I mean, he had other songs, but this song everybody sung. I mean, everybody had that CD in the '90s, and that song will always live on. It's a, it's a good song, right? But then he became what a, a ve- very famous country singer in Nashville, right? Mm-hmm. I get it, but he he had, he only had weed and mushrooms on him. Well, here's the thing. It's it, it that it's a double edged sword. It's not like he had a gun. I don't think I don't think he should have been arrested, but I don't think he shouldn't have been arrested because he's hooting in the blowfish. How about that? I, I, I that, don't think just because you're a celebrity that you get to no, bypass I, I laws. Know. I I a hundred percent. But I, I also think I, I, I some just, of that I'm just saying because it's, it's hooting in the blowfish, you know, and they're just like when you be starstruck and be like, Oh, sorry, dude. I used to just listen toss to your, it stuff I used in the garbage. To your song in the nineties. <laughs> Well, why did he have to carry his own stash? What's he doing driving around there? Uh, who knows? He doesn't have people for that. I'm sure he has like a personal assistant. Uh, uh, probably. Like, but... look at me. Like, yeah, like plug it on. <laughs> make your make your assistant go to jail. That was a stupid comment. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Lady buds. All right. At least he did it for himself then. Right. But my yeah. thing is whether it's whether it's Hootie the Blowfish or anybody in the state of Tennessee, I'm trying to get at that. You need to fix your shit, Tennessee, and get yes. your law straightened out and get it decriminalized. And if you don't want dispensaries, that's fine. If you don't want to sell it in your state, that's fine. But it should at least be decriminalized. Decriminalized. Yeah. No one should be arrested in Tennessee. I've been to Nashville and I've smoked weed in Nashville, and there's a lot of people that smoke weed in Nashville. I was walking up and down the streets, hitting my pen, <laughs> smoking joints outside of certain bars. Yeah. No one said a fucking word. You know? So. I like Tennessee. I love Chattanooga. I like I like Nashville's great. What's that? That there's that biscuit place too. With good biscuits right oh, outside. outside of Nashville. Oh god, uh, loves biscuits. cafe. Oh biscuits and their marmalade. Their marmalade. Oh yeah. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. That's good stuff. Mr. Weird Man's got to take a hit. So, uh, I'm just saying, Tennessee, come on now, we like. Decriminalize it. I saw your laws. I mean, you arrest people for like an ounce for like giving like throw the book at them, give them like fifty years for an ounce of weed. What are you doing? It's a Seriously. class one felony. Like they murdered somebody. Yeah. Come on now, it's cannabis. There's people in Tennessee, man. That Rocky Mountain High is for a reason. Mm-hmm. They don't call Rocky Mountain High for nothing, you know. So, Hootie, I hope you get out. Yeah. <laughs> I hope everything's all right. Um, I'd also like to thank. Ladybuds for yeah. No name strain. I don't know what I'm smoking, but it was some damn good weed, and it got me nice and ripped. And it last the high lasted. high lasted the whole yeah. show. Yeah, it did. Hour and twenty minutes. By the time we're done, mm-hmm. we're just smoking it again. Well done. I'm even looking at the camera and giving you uh, thank you giving you thank you, Lady Buds. We appreciate you for 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 throwing us this weed. Hopefully, you like the joint I gave you too. Uh, when I, when we saw it at that party, Zochi's party. So, um, Miss Weed Man, Mr. Weed Man, that's wants more end. weed. I will. Yeah, sure. There you go. Go out in a bang. <laughs>
Uh, that's the end of the show. Yeah. Another week. Down. Another week. Another day, another dollar. I know. Before we say goodbye, let Mrs. Weedman and I know if you want us to do two shows a week. No, oh, stepping it up. I'd Mr. like Weedman. to do two shows. You I mean, even, I, you're do not, two shows. I do you, two can shows. Can we confer about this well, first? Hold on. I do hold two on. shows a week. It'd be three shows. Right. So what I'm asking is, though, Mrs. Weedman, let's see if anybody out there, and if we get a thousand people that say they want us to do a second show. You and I will put maybe something together. Okay. We have to get a thousand people to tell us yes. Yeah. So if you okay. want it around the world, if you want us to do a second show, bring some guests on, do a second show with just Mrs. Weed Man and I, then we got the grow hour. A thousand people have to let us know, right? Okay. Or you think less? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to figure out where how that's going to happen, but we'll, we'll make, make it, it work. Happen. Tuesday, Thursdays. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. I like doing the show with you. It makes me happy. I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> Life is busy. I know. So, hey, everybody out there in the world. We love you. Miss Weeman, you got anything else to say? Thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Keep on listening. Keep on sharing. Keep on stomping the stigma of cannabis. It's good. <laughs> Sharing is caring. It is. Everybody in the world, we love you. As Paulie always says, smoke smart. Puff, puff, and away. Puff, puff, pass. Check out our cannabis lifestyle brand online at 8decades.com. Our custom smokes and accessories are perfect for your coffee table, bedroom nightstand, or kitchen counter. They're designed for you to show them off. The Canna community is also loving our hemp and cotton blend t-shirts, sweatshirts, scarves, and hats finished off with our 8 Decades logo. We've got some awesome long-lasting goods that will be your favorite for years to come. 8 Decades, because a ninth decade of cannabis prohibition isn't acceptable.